and to Mother Boy and to all of the people of God that are represented today, to, to Mother, to all the pastors. God bless you. It's so good to see you. To all of the pastors and the people of God that are represented, that are watching worldwide. And I just didn't want to um, get too wound up because today's lesson, I was coming down the stairs and I said to somebody, I said, today's lesson is very powerful. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited about what I sense God doing because I know for a fact that um, I can feel the life changing, the life changing mentality in the atmosphere when I walk in. You could, you could feel people uh, being revived and being restored. The Bible said to be not conformed to this world. Um, and people think uh, a lot of times, and you can bring it to the top of my monitor, um, I have a new sound guy that's traveling and doing prayer with me because we didn't burnt Jerry out by both ends. And um, he finally collapsed and said, I, have mercy. Because we've been going for about five and a half years nonstop without a vacation. And, and then when we added prayer to our agenda, we was on the road preaching Thursday and Friday. He and I were flying back from wherever I was preaching at on Saturday. And he was doing sound for me on Sunday mornings. And then we were leaving out sometimes on Sunday or Mondays to come here. And um, so Jerry kind of like crashed. And I said, okay, Jerry, He's, he had a week's vacation coming up and then he begged for two weeks. And then I said, well, just go ahead. And so I told him, I said, now we'll get you on the road on the weekends. But the Lord blessed us and favored us with another sound man to come and do the Tuesday prayer for us and also to help with sound at the church. And he is, he doesn't know all of my signals as of yet. So if I have to stop sometime and tell him what to do, he working with me here. And uh, he's done uh, ear monitors for Anita Baker for about 15 plus years. So uh, give my sound man a hand. Amen, 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 amen. And I, so I thank the Lord for him. So if the sound is still making its adjustment, it's not because he doesn't know what he's doing. It's just going to take us time. Jerry and I have been together for, I told him, I said, Jerry, it's almost like a marriage. It's like 10 years, <laughs> 10 years celebrating. But uh, so he, he knows even the way I turn my head what's going on and know how to adjust it. So it'll take us a few minutes to, to get it together, but we will, but we will. If you can turn it up in the house a little bit more, Ron, and that'll help my, 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 my ears a little bit. Um, okay, we got it here. Elder boy, uh, the, the, the scripture, bring a little bit more to the top of my voice, to the top of the head of the mic. Um, raise it up some more. Today's lesson is, is uh, unbelievable. Uh, in connection with what we have been studying and what we have been encountering even um, this past Sunday when I got done um, you can pull it down a little bit because I'm getting a little ringing in my ear uh, when I got to church on Sunday and um, wasn't particularly uh, feeling 100% and flying from Africa and then to South America and half the times I wake up and don't even know where I am. I'm like, where we at? They're like, you at home? I'm like, okay. <laughs> what, 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 what city are we in now? You in South America. What time is it? So my body is still, um, put a little more reverb. My body is still adjusting to that time and uh, trying to find its way back. But uh, we're here. If you can go with me to the book of uh, Ezekiel, the 47th chapter. Go back to the way you had it because it, it, it gave me a lot more bottom and, uh, and, and, and open it up so that it doesn't compress because when I, when I go to shout into it, it compresses. It even has compression. Yes, much better. And give me more volume because I have it on 10 now, which means I can't turn it up anymore. And I usually don't have it on any more than six. In Ezekiel, the 47th chapter, and we have to see where, uh, uh, where we are now with what God is saying about us and we were talking about and th this is going to be life changing so please write 
This is going to be life changing, so please write. Um, we had been talking about how the body is made up of 70%, 70, 70 percent water, and the brain is made up of 80 percent water. So the brain is surrounded by 80 percent water, the body is surrounded by 70 percent water. And somebody said, Well, what does this have to do with prayer? In a minute, you will see that it has a lot to do with prayer. We've heard. Uh, it has a lot to do with prayer. A lot to do with prayer. He, it, it says here that when we start understanding, it's perfect. When we start understanding where we are, and this is, this is more prophetic than we know, and how it is necessary, people of God, it is very necessary that we understand as human beings that God is not functioning without your participation without your participation which means for example if the lord says if the scripture said i will bless the lord oh my soul and all that's within me bless his holy name and if he says i want you to offer up a sacrifice of praise and then the scripture tells us that in your sacrifice of praise that there are even things that the lord would do for us because we sacrifice in praise. There are things that can only be released in a sacrificial praise. Everything can be released in thank you Jesus. There are only some things that can be released when the physical body says, I can't praise him and I don't feel like praising him. There's only certain miracles that can be released when it is a sacrifice coming up to God. And we all know that where many of us have walked and where some of you are walking right now, what I'm trying to do is lock into your mind the fact that you are a guaranteed, a guaranteed instrument that produces miracles at all times. Why? Because of the things that we encounter every time we praise him as a sacrifice. Well, I, I'm going to come on this side because maybe somebody over here don't. Every time, we, every time we praise him, it's a sacrifice. And, and, so, and so the fact that you get up, you sacrifice your sleep. Every time you can note something that you have sacrificed in order for God to get that praise, then you know that something is being released for you. Did somebody just learn something? Woo, my God. So then we ask ourselves, then what? is praise how do i magnify the lord you magnify the lord when you walked in here the minute your feet came across the threshold praise began to go up from your physical body the mouth is not the only thing that praise him your feet praise him when they walked in here touch somebody say i came in here with a praise my feet touch the threshold praise started when I found my designated seat that was designated for me before the foundation of the world was laid this date was on the calendar miracles started for me tell somebody just being where you're supposed to be starts miracles that are happening for you Jesus, Jesus. So the Lord would not do this without your participation. You have to participate in your miracle. Because it has to be your testimony. But he asks you what God is. I think God is. No. You have to be present. I got, I got to teach this. You got to be present in the miracle. Everything about you has to be present. And we're so busy. We're so busy being afraid of the what if that we miss the experience of operating in the miraculous. Because our minds are over here with what if it don't happen and what if the, and then the devil and this can't be true because. But see that's the reason why we, we are learning now that we're not, we're not operating in the things of God by what we feel. We are operating in the things of God by principle. And when I get that principle, 
the feeling is an extra because if you lock your if you lock your deliverance and you lock your miracles into your feelings then what's going to happen the day that you got a, a flu I don't, I don't feel like I have no miracle because I don't feel it's not connected to your feelings Sis, did I just say something right there? It's not connected to your faith. You can wake up tomorrow with a migraine. That ain't going to stop your miracle from happening. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Because there are going to be some days that you can't even raise your arm to say thank you. The other morning when I wanted to come to the camera, I couldn't even raise my head. But because I was laying down on my prayer pillows, I didn't miss what God had for me. God is not looking for a fake action. He's looking for a heart that's connected to the reality of who he is and what he's about to accomplish for you. Jesus, 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 Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. A heart that's connected to the reality of what he's going to do for me. But did you run around the church today? No, but my heart is connected to a reality. Y'all ain't saying that. Did you get your dance in? Not this Sunday, but my heart is connected to... My heart didn't change. My head was hurting, but my heart didn't change. I had pain in my back, but my heart didn't change. And as long as my heart doesn't move... Y'all, come on. Jesus. So then, so then what's the guarantee? Here it is. What's the guarantee? When he took me and started talking about water and the significance of, the significance of it and the significance of the human body and how it relates and the brain and how it relates and, and, and the heart and how it relates. He took me to uh, Ezekiel, the 47th chapter. And the 47th chapter of the book of Ezekiel said, and God caught me up in the spirit watch this he caught me up in the spirit and he took me to the temple and he said to me to measure the temple now watch this people he began to measure the temple with a reed and as he began to measure the temple he got to one side of the temple and he said I looked down underneath the door and there was water coming from the north south east and the west I stepped in and the water covered my feet and when I stepped in it came up around my knees when I stepped in another direction it came up around my waist come on somebody and then he looked and he said and water was just coming and the water watch this and the water was coming from out from under the doors of the tabernacle Jesus, watch this. And then the water, the water ran down through the Jordan Valley. I want you to hear this. The water ran down through the Jordan Valley. The water came from the tabernacle of God. And it flowed down to the valley of the Jordan. Which says, watch this, which says by the time it was time for the prophet to come to the waters where Naaman was. The water wasn't filthy in the spirit. Naaman said, the Jordan River is filthy. Why do you want me to go dip in the Jordan? But the prophetic waters that sit in the Jordan came from the tabernacle in the spirit. Okay, watch this. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. What am I saying? If every time you look in the scripture, you will always see where the waters are always controlled by the prophetic. The prophet Elijah took his mantle. He hit the water. And what happened? Stay with me. Stay with me because this is going to make, this is going to change your life. The prophet Elijah took the mantle and what happened? The waters parted. The waters parted. Elisha was with him doing transfiguration. 
when he was caught up, his mantle fell. When Elijah took the mantle, what happened? Talk loud. The waters did what? The waters, the waters parted. When Moses took his rod and stretched it out, what happened? What happened? The waters did what? The waters did what? So every instance in the Bible when you look and see when the waters were shaken or the waters was moved or the waters was parted, it was done by the prophetic. Jesus, it was done by... This ain't gonna make no sense to you, but in a minute it will. It was done by the prophets. It was done by the prophetic anointing. Come on now. Just the teacher couldn't walk up and say, and I just want these waters apart. There was something about, about the prophetic that governed the thought pattern of the prophet. Okay, Jesus. The winds and the waves are raging. And what does he say to the water? What does he say to the water? What does he say to the water? Okay, and if the water is indicative and representative of the word and the spirit, then that says that if the Christ lives in you, then you are housing the prophet that has the power to control the waters. Oh, y'all, come here. I can't hear nobody talk to me. I can't hear nobody talk to me. So let me go back to this example. Watch this. Watch this. Underneath, underneath the tabernacle, the waters came. Watch this. Watch this. And so then we know that the body is made up of 70% water. And, and some of you were here when I gave this illustration of how the scientists went in. How the scientists went in and they spoke over the bowl of water. And you all remember that? And the water turned black. The whole nine yards, you remember that? Somebody said, well, what are you, are you teaching metaphysics? No, I'm teaching spirituality from a different level and we ain't slap happy and walking around acting like we don't understand what's going on. You understand what I'm saying? Because when we start really being honest, we can walk around the church and run around the church and run and people are not still getting results. And they're not getting results because there are some elements of the intelligence of the spirit that we are missing. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. There are some elements of the intelligence. What do you mean by intelligence? The book of Proverbs 4 and 1 said, My son, I would that you would pay attention, that you may gain intelligent comprehension, discernment, and interpretation of spiritual matters. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So why would the Lord decide to baptize you with the Holy Spirit? Because he wanted to fill you with the kind of water that will continue to produce for you. I heard about maybe five people say something. I heard about five people rejoice because you got people that are sitting in the church and don't even know the meaning of why you were baptized in the Holy Ghost. You were baptized in the Holy Ghost so that something will enter your body to change your waters. So that something can enter your body. The Bible said we are born in sin, sheep in iniquity. But if I baptize you in the Holy Ghost, oh, y'all, <laughs> Lord God, watch this. If I baptize you in the if I baptize you in the Holy Spirit, watch this, watch this. If I baptize you in the Holy Spirit, then the spirit of who you are changes. Wait a minute, come on, Jesus. I'm, I'm going to say that one more time, Reverb. The spirit of who you are changes. Okay, okay. Spirit of God, eternal. Get, come on with me. Spirit of God, eternal. There is no death in the Spirit of God. Hmm. There is no decaying in the Spirit of God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
Y'all act like the Bible line. People really did live to be 800 years old. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing y'all People really did live to be 300 years old. So why are you letting the devil kill you at 32? I'm not hearing y'all. No, no, you can't afford to live without the Holy Spirit because that becomes the new water of your spirit. That's the thing that begins to dictate whether or not you will live or die, whether or not you will survive, whether or not you will have joy. Oh, y'all, come on. Whether or not you will have peace. Wait a minute. Why? Why, prophetess? Why, prophetess? Sit down. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Say it with me. Because the prophets control the water. Now, no, y'all not saying that with me. The prophets control the water. Say it again. Say it again. Because see, understand something. Why do you think? Why do you think? Why do you think that when Jesus got inside of that boat and he said, push me out, his voice, if I'm in the pulpit and you all are in the audience and this is the sea, my voice got to go over that water before it gets to you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying that. He had to turn around and put his voice back over the water. He had to tell the water that the true and the living water, which is the word of God, is what makes the thing that you're supposed to sink in solid. All of a sudden, the thing that you're supposed to sink in become solid the thing the devil thought was going to take you out now becomes your chariot I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me the thing that you didn't think you were going to ever make it out of now becomes your stepping stone no 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 watch this you got to see 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 this that's why that's why, watch this, that's why Isaiah, the 41st chapter says, I will open rivers on the bare heights. I will create fountains in the midst of the valley. The wilderness, a pool of water. And dry land, springs of water. Why does he keep talking about this, y'all? Why does he keep talking about this? Watch this. Why does he keep... Why does he keep talking about the water? Why does he keep talking about the water? Why does he keep talking about the water? Now I'm going to say it one more time. The prophets <laughs> controlled the waters and the waters split. Yes. They, listen, listen. Grab this. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Stay right here. Stay right here. Because if you get this, if you get this, <laughs> it's going to change you forever. The prophets split the waters and they were the prophets that were called to walk in the scripture before the baptism of the Holy Ghost came. Before the bat, Why do y'all think that when Elijah, when it was time for him to split the water, there was a mantle involved with the splitting of the water. Why do you think when it was time to go and bring down the prophets of Baal on the altar, why did he pour water on the altar first? Come on, come on, go with me. Come on, why did he pour water on the altar first before the fire came from heaven? Because the water is a representation of the word and the power of Christ. Y'all come on here. The fire came because the word was poured all over the altar. Jesus. No, come on, we getting there. We getting there. We getting there. Prophets parted the water, parted the water. But then what happened when Jesus came? What happened when Jesus came? What happened when Jesus came? Jesus came full of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. He came full of the Holy Ghost. But then if you're full of the Holy Ghost and you are the Word and you are 
the word and you are the living word then why do you Jesus need to be baptized why do you need to go down in water Jesus what is the purpose of your baptism the purpose of your baptism is because the scripture must be fulfilled that said any two touching and agreeing when the word itself stepped in the water the waters didn't part heaven parted come on here somebody come on here heaven 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 you have the Christ that's living in you which says the prophetic of our times y'all come on they don't part water they part heaven they they open up uh, my thank you Jesus opens up heaven uh, my my glory hallelujah opens up heaven whatever needs to be straightened out I just gotta get it to the water y'all come on here that's why the devil don't want us to praise in the spirit and preach in the spirit and prophesy in the spirit because anything that you throw in the water it changes y'all come on here when God was having trouble with Jonah he said throw him overboard and the water changed him oh y'all sit down sit down Jesus Lord have mercy Lord have mercy somebody in your family that's rebellious and it looked like they ain't gonna never change throw them overboard Y'all, come on, y'all sitting there like, I said throw them overboard. Throw them inside of your, thank you, Jesus. Get the anointing upon you and throw them overboard. Because the water, watch this, the water changes. And the prophetic word of God has the power to change the water. Watch this, watch this. I don't know, I do. Well, why did they wait till Jesus got to the wedding and the wine was gone? He didn't say, bring me some mud. He said, bring me some water. Because I know that I have power to transform the water. Y'all ain't said, and when they got through drinking, they said, you saved the best wine for last. Because they had never tasted anything like that before. Because it was prophetic. It wasn't something. Watch this. It wasn't something. I'm going somewhere with this. It wasn't something that could be done in the natural oh, when Peter stepped out on the water he said I can bid you to come out here because watch this the raging waters can't stand up over the original water that which I have created can't rage against me Is anybody here today? I told you I wasn't giving y'all no cereal for breakfast. Come on here. I told you this ain't gonna be no cereal for breakfast. I told you you're not gonna get up and ask me for a donut for 5 a.m. prayer. It's time for us to go to another dimension in our thinking and in revelation. Come on here. Come on here. He said, watch this. He said, no, when the word stands on top of the water i can control the sea because i am the prophet i can control the waters if i prophesy okay I, we're going back to the original we're going back to the original i can control what's going on if i prophesy not just praise not just giving glory but while I'm up in that spirit I got to open my mouth and rearrange what's going on I got to alter watch this I got to alter what's going on watch this watch this watch this I got to alter what's going on so so then here we go what, what, what how is that possible because prophets you don't know what I deal with the Bible said the man 
was building him a house. He was working on a house. And he borrowed a tool from somebody. And the axe head fell in the water. So this is going to be the whole reason why we come into prayer. I was working on something prophetess. And the axe head fell in the water. And the prophet, the prophetic anointing, just want to know one question. Where did it fall? If you, if you can show me, <laughs> if you can show me where your vision fell, if you can bring it to prayer and show me where the enemy tried to take your destiny, then the prophetic will show up and get another stick, y'all ain't hearing me, and make it float again. No, 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 I'm going to help you with this. Float again. So when it was time for the prophetic to recover the axe head, do y'all know how much an axe head weigh? An axe head can't float. That's, that's iron and steel. That can't float. That ain't got no job. You can't get no house. That's, 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 I don't even have good credit. I can't get no car. Come on, somebody. That's, that's my son, my daughter, whoever is on drugs. Do you know they've been on drugs for 30 years? We don't even speak. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So then he said, in this prayer, in this prayer, I'm looking for axe heads. I'm not looking for, and we worship you, Lord, and whoo, that was just so powerful. No, ma'am, I'm looking for real issues. I'm looking for stuff that people done gave up on. I'm looking for stuff that even yourself, that you done lost the faith to even believe. I'm looking at stuff that you look at every day and wonder in your mind, will it ever change? It ain't gonna never, Lord, will this ever change? I pray and I pray and I pray and I pray, but this won't change. Uh, so the prophet goes and he gets something. He gets something. Watch this. He said he gets a stick. The axe head was sitting on a stick. So he had to go get something that, that was familiar. Y'all ain't saying that. He goes and get a stick. He goes and get, he get praise. And he sticks it. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He go and get your, your thank you, Jesus. He find, when the Spirit of God starts looking, he finds the stick in 5 a.m. prayer that he needs to use. I, I'm not hearing y'all. Uh-huh. Uh, when he starts looking around to see who can I make this person flow? How can I get this person off of drugs? How can I break this yoke right here? How can I bring her off of prostitution? How can I change their finances? How can I give them houses that they did not build and cars that they did not pay for? I'm not talking about car payments. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not talking about house payments. How can I do that? I got to go to 5 a.m. prayer and find a stick I got to I got I got to find yeah, I got to find something to stick in this water y'all come on he ain't asking you to fix it he asking you Loan me your stick. Loan me your position. Because in order to find a stick, it had to be on the ground somewhere. Uh, y'all, come on. Come I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. In order to find something that's worthy to be stuck in the water, if it's a stick in the Bible days, you only can get it two ways. Which means, watch this, you got to find it on the ground because it's lost, because it's been trampled on, because it had laid out in unfavorable weather, or you had to break it off of a limb. And that's the reason why some of us had to go through a breaking before you were qualified to be the kind of stick that the prophetic can use to stick in the water and cause the promise to float. 
Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Tell your neighbor, I don't know how you got here. I don't know how you got here. Tell your neighbor, I don't know how you got here. But some of us here to break us to get us here. Uh, some of us, we were found lost and left alone. Some of us was looking useless. Some of us was looking unworthy. Some of us was looking like, looking like God couldn't use me because there was something about me that God could use. And God said, what I'm trying to tell you is that when you connect a stick, a plain old stick, a plain old sister that's in the church, that's got a praise, a plain old deacon, I'm not here nobody. You ain't got to have no title. If I can just find a plain old somebody that's steadfast, unmovable, and always abound. Then I can, what's this? He said, he stuck the stick in the water and the axe head began to float. Wait, wait, wait. And the axe head began to float at the word of the prophet. Wow. Wow. No, wow. The waters parted at the words of the prophet. Hmm. Wow. They went all the way across on dry land from Egypt at the word of the prophetic. No, at the word of stretch out your rod. Yeah. Do you know how big the sea is? You can't swim that. Y'all can't swim across the Red Sea. Come on, somebody. Impossible. Uh-huh. So you have to look at the impossibility in order for the prophetic to become eligible in your life. So, y'all, I'm, I'm not hearing y'all. Some, some, of y'all some of y'all is just, and I just let alone. No, we're not talking about that because that doesn't ignite the prophetic. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The prophetic is ignited by, watch this, by conditions that have been outmeasured by man the prophetic is needed when a situation arises in your life that can't nobody fix but the prophetic I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me the bible said and God hardened Pharaoh's heart but then the next part of the scripture said so that God can give Israel miracles I'm not hearing y'all talk back somebody better say something right there uh-huh. somebody better understand the day I'm where I am today because I am eligible for the prophetic uh-huh, my, my, my circumstance is the one uh-huh, that the prophetic will be made manifest. Wait, wait. Oh, Jesus. That it would be made, it would be made, it would be made manifest. So then what I have to do, watch this. What I have to do now is I have to understand which side of the prophetic do I want to be on? Do, Do I want to be on the side that part waters? Watch this. Because the scientists have proven that the waters in our body, it governs even our emotions and our stress level. Okay, do I just want to be a Christian that come to prayer and I just pray and ask the prophetic anointing to govern my water to make me feel better? To, Lord, I just don't want to be depressed no more. And I just want you to, I, Lord, I just, need to, I just need to feel the victory and I just feel down and, and I just feel like I can't make it. Are we going to stay in the place where we just want to use the baptism to make us feel better? Uh, y'all, come on. Uh-huh. To, 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 this is, this is. Come on, this is this is way out there. This is way out there. I, I just I just want the joy of the Lord and and I just want to use the prophetic because I just want some peace and and I just uh, the Bible said when they was when they was rebuilding the wall, they said, you know what? We ain't the devil is right there. I remember reading the scripture where, where, where David was on his way back from war, and this man was the Bible literally said was walking along the sidelines, cursing him out cursing him out and 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 wait a minute, the scripture said and David never turned and paid him any attention because he had the mind of a king no y'all see come on somebody because 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 we have we have we have used the anointing 
we have used the anointing in so many instances just to feel better and just to feel the power and feel the spirit when we have not even tapped into the full potential of what we are working with it is more for it to just make us run around the church and feel good and say Lord I praise you your tongue is supposed to be a governor a governor of this world you're supposed to wake up in the morning and decree what this day should be oh Jesus I, I, my, my day is going to be prosperous and it's going to be filled with progress I'm going to see okay that's alright that's alright because the world wants y'all to keep on going to church while everybody else is going to the bank no, no, I'm not I'm not I'm not hearing nobody say nothing I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there I, I, I'm not here all them people that's wealthy and we sitting in here in the kingdom talking about I'm, a, I'm praying for Jay-Z and I'm praying for I'm praying for Bill Gates and I'm praying I'm not hearing y'all I'm not hearing y'all the world wants us to keep going to prayer and be deceived into thinking that if I just pray y'all ain't saying nothing but no you got to get up off your knees and confront the issue like God gave Joshua I'm not hearing y'all talk back and you got to do it with prophetic insight you got to be able after you get through praying to look over in the land where you trying to get to and say I can take that I can do that I'm not here nobody we prayers over and we still scared I'm not here nobody talk to me prayers over and we still we still shaking come on somebody I'm not here nobody say nothing I'm not here nobody say nothing prayer I was getting ready to leave the other day going out of town and uh, John the prophetic is the knowledge of the unknown that gives me the advantage to speak it first. Okay. Yeah. I can't get nobody. It's like it. Can I say that again? Can I say it again? Prayer with a spirit filled person. Prayer with a spirit filled person. That houses Christ for real is a heaven splitter. And, and, and is a heaven splitter. And when you split heaven, watch this, when you split heaven, you are privileged to conversations about futuristic goings on. And that that you cannot hear, you are privileged with the power to create it and speak it. Why? Because that which you cannot hear with the natural ear is being downloaded in your spirit. And that's why some things come out your mouth. You even shock yourself and say, where did that come from? I don't even know what happened. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like your back get up against the wall and all of a sudden, all of a sudden at your mouth say, you start saying, no, uh, I, no money coming from everywhere. And then you have to catch yourself and say, I don't even remember. I don't even know how that came out my mouth. It didn't come out of your mouth. It didn't come out of your mouth. It didn't come. Heaven sits inside of you. And it got downloaded. And God said, you can't miss the moment. And so since there's warfare all around you, I'm going to use your mouth to speak stuff that wasn't even in your mind. God. Because it cannot happen if it is not prophesied. Yo, come on here. You're not in church 24-7. You're not going to be around prophetess Bynum, but you're going to be around prophetess you. Wait. No, I got to tell you this. Lord Jesus, you're going to be around you. All the time. 24-7. Yo, come on. You're going to be you're going to be connected to you. And all you got to do is be a vessel. And y'all come over here somebody. All you got to do is be a vessel. Because there is some stuff that is sitting on the inside of you. That you don't even know about. I'm not giving you. God ain't bringing you to prayer to be pitiful. He bringing you to prayer to wake up your spirit. So your spirit man can start back to 
they hearing the promise. Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, see, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, y'all, watch this, y'all. That's why he didn't say to us, I'm going to put within your belly a pool in the spirit. No, that's why he didn't say, he didn't say, I'm going to put in you and you're going to have a, you're going to have a lake of joy. That's why he didn't say, I'm going to put in you and I'm just going to cause a waterfall to be coming at your heart. He said, out of your belly. I'm not, I'm not hearing, mother. He said, out of your belly. Mother, he said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And somebody said, yeah, rivers. No, let me help you with that. Let, let, let me help you with that. In order to become a river, you got to come from an ocean. And you got to have the power to return back to the ocean so that you can keep being a river. I'm not hearing y'all. That means you're getting a blood transfusion every time you praise God. That means every time you produce something, the waters of your spirit goes back to the ocean and get something else. Rivers. Oh. talks about he talks about the four main rivers how in one of the rivers is gold y'all come on here come i'm talking about the rivers that come out of your spirit that come from the ocean of heaven which means you are the producer always if you have one day and you didn't produce nothing you violated what you say that you have in you oh y'all i now somebody gonna go to sleep on that one. Somebody gonna go to sleep on that one. Did you do, did you do anything? Did you, did you, did you come one minute from under the auspices of the victim? One minute. Did you? Well, I don't have no, all I got is five dollars and 36 cents in my name. And I just need a five. Did you take a dollar and 29 cent of it and buy somebody some coffee so that you can make sure that you keep yourself out of the mindset of the spiritual deficit okay i'm not i'm not i'm not y'all ain't saying that y'all ain't saying that come on here somebody come on here somebody wait 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 I'm not talking about millions. I'm talking about a mindset. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm talking about your spirit. I'm not hearing y'all. I don't care if you got 50 cents. Did you give a child a quarter? Because movement in the spirit from the heavens keep you from being overloaded and all oh, y'all drowned by the issues and keep you postured. Postured. No, I have to, I have to give this because I'm a river. Forgive this because I'm a river. Why is she always giving people I'm a river? Why is she? Well, that, I just think she kind of, oh, I'm a river. I, well, why? Because if I stop, I become a pool. And when I become a pool, I got to wait to high tide. I got to wait till the weather change. I got to wait till my boss give me a check. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody. I gotta wait till the weather is conducive to come in my favor. But when I am a river, I flow in the rain. I y'all, y'all. Even in the winter time, the ice is on top, but underneath the bottom, I'm still flowing. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. Cause I got to. I got to keep. Watch this. I got to keep moving. Wait a minute. I got to keep moving. Somebody said, well, principal, here go principal. Why am I guaranteed that the miraculous, watch this, and destiny is going to be arrived by you? Why am I so confident? Because 
when you become a river watch this and you keep allowing the spirit of God to flow out of you and flow through you and he says watch this and he says rivers of living water every time you hear the word the reason why you are supposed to praise him because where any two touch and agree Father, Son, Holy Spirit, threefold cord that cannot be broken. But the witness, <laughs> the witness and the one that intercedes for us is the Spirit of God. So all I have to do, watch this, is to agree with the Spirit of God. Why? Why, Why has the Lord picked me out to say, I'm going to be blessed? You in this building, you've been handpicked. Why have I been handpicked to say, I'm going to be blessed? Because the ultimate goal of God is not a house. The ultimate goal of God is not, is not a car. The ultimate goal of God is not all of these things. But what he has to do is show to you. Watch this. It's almost like what the Bible said. Don't walk up to a poor man and say be blessed and he hungry. Everybody heard that scripture? Don't walk up to a poor man and say be blessed when the man is hungry. So why does the Lord gives us that as a, as a tool, my sister of wisdom, that when you see a poor person, you feed them first, and then you tell them about Jesus. Because when you see a person, y'all ain't saying, that's struggling in their finances, I'm going to bless you first. Y'all, come on. That's why I told you, in the next realm of God, he's not going to use your faith. You've been favored. You've been favored. You gonna be, he going to bless you unto faith. In other words, by the time he gets through doing for you, what he's going to do for you, it's going to cause you to have a faith in God you've never had before. Wait, wait. Wait. I'm going to say it again. I, but I, I don't know. That's off doctrine because the Bible said that without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. Peter didn't have no faith. He said, we done toiled all night, but nevertheless, at your word, he didn't say, I believe it. Because he was the one that went through the whole Bible time and said, Lord, help my unbelief. Y'all, come on, here, somebody. Come on, here, somebody. Come on, we got to stop faking now. We got to stop faking and acting like we got faith in God all the time. Come on, here, somebody. But when the prophetic word of God go out, even if you lose your faith, he cannot return his word back to him void. It has got to accomplish and prosper in the thing where to I sent it. Just look at somebody and say, I'm just having a faithless day. But that ain't going to stop the promise. Because he didn't prophesy to me on my faith. He prophesied it to me so I can have faith. He didn't require that I had faith when he spoke over my life. Y'all, is the Holy Ghost talking to anybody in here? Is the Holy Ghost, when he picked you out and gave you a word of prophecy, some of y'all, he shocked you. He shocked you. When he told you you was going to preach, it shocked you. When he told you he was going to use you, you wasn't laying in the bed telling me I got faith that one day God going to bless. No, you was a stinking sinner. You wasn't thinking about God. But the word came over your life unto faith. Unto faith. So watch this. So then the ultimate goal, watch this. So the ultimate goal is this. When he spoke over the waters and Peter cast his net again. They said, all right, we're going to cast it one more time. At your word. When they, here it is. When they saw what they caught. Just by his word. They said, oh shoot, I ain't getting ready to fool with no fish. I'm gonna go with him. Cause if because if he said that and we taught all night long and didn't catch nothing, and that one word, our net is about to break. Y'all can have these 
Spirit. I'm going with the word. I'm not hearing y'all. In other words, the Lord said, I got to bless y'all. Y'all come over here in this 5 a.m. prayer. There's a guaranteed miracle coming. There's a guaranteed blessing. You are one set of people that ain't got to shake as to whether or not God is going to do what he said. Because the Lord is going to do it to such a degree. His y'all, his projection is to make you drop your neck and say, I don't care about no house. I don't care about no car. I'm going going all the way with God what you what you asking him for is the bait y'all come on here let me help you with this let me help you with this he said that y'all would be fishers of men did the bible say that did the Bible say that? Okay. He didn't tell you. Because this has some of y'all doing it. I'm going to get my hook. And I'm going to put a worm on it. And I'm going to pull me a fish. And oh, I got, I got a testimony. Lord, he blessed me with some cookies. And I'm going to get me another hook. And I'm going to put a little praise on it. And I'm going to cast it out again. And ooh. The bus was going to leave me. And the man said, he just happened to look up. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Y'all didn't say that. We net people. We're not fishing rod people. You're supposed to be people that get a whole lot of stuff at one time. See, I can't get nobody to go with me, Elder Boy, because I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the whole church now is under the auspice of one day at a time, sweet Jesus. No, 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 no. We are in the era and the dispensation now where we ought to cast our nets. I'm not hearing y'all because it's massive now. The deliverance is massive now. The breakthrough is massive now. Come on. What you got coming is massive. What do you mean it's massive? It's all the stuff that's been clogged up in the pool. I'm not hearing y'all. It's all the stuff that he promised that you ain't never caught. Now the rivers of living water is coming to flush it out. To flush I just, I just walk around. I'm looking for, I don't know about y'all, but my expectancy is of the Sanford and Son. Here it is, Elizabeth. This is the big one. I'm not hearing y'all talk. He said, I'm going to open the windows of heaven. How? Because the heaven opener as a prophet is in you. And the minute you stop praising God, you stir up the water. come to prayer sit down y'all I'm finished sit down for a second sit down for a second I didn't come to prayer to pray for I didn't come to prayer to pray for no for no June bug and and and, and Esther May and and I didn't come to, I'm, I didn't get out of my bed to come not this season to pray for an ind individual I got out of my bed so my neck can break. I'm, I'm going out of here with more than just a prayer answer for Jumba. You got to be out your mind to think I'm going to stand in this kind of power and stand in this kind of anointing and all I come out with is one thing. I'm not hearing y'all. No, we with Jesus. I'm not hearing y'all. We with Jesus. We with the one that when he stuck his feet in the water, heaven opened up. Now watch this. Heaven open up. Heaven open up and immediately the prophetic started talking. 
because Jesus hadn't done nothing and heaven opened up and said this is my son in whom I am well pleased which means heaven was already prophesying that his work was already finished and that everything he was going to do in the flesh in the spirit was already done y'all gonna get this that's why I keep saying it's time to open up heaven because when you do you gonna hear God prophesying everything that's already been done in the spirit that you so I'm not I'm not waiting on God I'm waiting in God I'm not waiting on God to fix it I'm waiting in God what? so what causes me not to be moved because I'm not I'm waiting on God is this I can, I can see it now when, when we were younger and my mother would get us dressed and we didn't have no car and she would pick a couple of us and say watch for the ride because they called the saints for a ride and so we just go to the window looking and I tell my sister I gotta use the bathroom can you sit by the window and watch for the ride and I want to use the bathroom and she's sitting by the window and she got the curtain so where you have to pull our curtain back to watch for the ride she waiting for God is watching for the ride and then you're afraid to go to the bathroom because you don't want to miss the ride waiting in God in the 21st century is I ain't got to sit by the window I got a cell phone that I can walk to my bathroom with me and I can talk to the person while they driving on their way to get me y'all ain't saying nothing and I can start thanking them for coming to pick me up and then I can ask them how far away are you and they can navigate to me and tell me in just a few days hold on in just a few weeks hold on by this time tomorrow it'll be yours by tonight I'm not hearing y'all I wish I had I wish I had a church in here right now I wish I had a church in here right now to know that God is teaching us to operate even according to the manufacturing of the 21st century we got cell phones we got text messages I'm not hearing y'all we don't have to be connected as long as we pay our bill what is our bill pay him in praise so what's wrong with you I just said something right there I said pay him pay him in praise yeah come on I, I didn't hear nobody I said pray pay him can I prove it wait a minute stop praising God for a minute can I prove it the Bible said the Bible said I will offer up a sacrifice of praise John the Bible commands the believer the Bible commands the Christian to praise God did we did we all tell God yes I will praise you raise your hand if you told God when you got saved yes I will praise you okay as I close when you said that that was a verbal spiritual vow that was a verbal spiritual vow and the Bible said Jonah was down there in that water in the belly of that fish and he was praying and he was praying and he was praying and he was still stuck down there he was saying all kind of stuff he was still stuck down there but when the Lord said pay that he said watch this when Jonah finally said I will pay that which I vow to you the very next scripture said and the spirit of the Lord calls a fish to spit him up I'm not hearing y'all so what how I'm gonna get my ex head out the water I'm gonna pay my vow of praise I don't know about nobody else but I can never stop praising God I can never stop praising God I can never because that is how I am paying to keep my window open for the rivers of living water to unstop my well so praise ain't Praise ain't, thank you, Jesus. Praise now ain't, ooh, hallelujah, I feel this. Praise ain't, I feel like praising. 
Praise is, excuse me. I got some stuff stuck in the water. Excuse me. I got a cell phone spirit. I can go anywhere I want to go. Yeah, y'all. That's why he said, if you go to the bottom of the sea, I'm with you. If you rise above the heavens, I'm with you. With you. With you. When you go to the, through the fire, you should not be burned. Come on, somebody. Are y'all hearing this? Is somebody getting this? Is somebody getting this? I'm telling you, God is getting me to turn some of y'all into machines. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. Because Elder Boyd, I'm here to tell you, we were, my, the prophetic word of God, I was at home, and I'm going, I'm going to give this testimony, I was at home, getting ready to leave to come and go out of town. I was on my way to Columbia, South America last week, and I was on my way out of town, and my sister sent me a text and said that a little girl that was in an accident, that she almost died, her body was all broke up, but we, you know, she walked into the church, she had been in a coma for nine months. And, and God brought out of the coma and, 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 and she came to the church and one Sunday in the middle of my message I was preaching and my God it felt like five wars coming to an end and the Lord said to me whenever the presence gets this high perform miracles I was like me? He said, you shall decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. You decide to hand me your pressure. Give me your pressure. If you decide, now I'm asking for it, but you ain't got to give it to me. But you're deciding to give me your pressure, and when I take your pressure and I decide to put it on I am now establishing a fresh anointing going into her garment because she decided to give it to me and I had the anointing from God and permission to establish it for her in other words this is not the working season this is the deciding season. You decree a thing and I'll do it for you. It's, it's like a woman getting out the car and she got a bunch of bags in her hand and the man run over and said, I'll get that for you. When you decided to get out of the car and you decided I'm going to try to carry all these bags then the Lord said it'll be established for you when you decide. And the anointing was high. And I walked over there by the voice of God. And I walked over to her. And I laid my hands on top of her head. Service was packed and I said, I command this body to line up every fiber, every bone, every platelet, I said, God, it shall be a miracle for the doctors. And they shall call it a miracle. Now, we're talking about a person that keep going in and out of comas. And the devil starts saying to me, now, you know you done laid your hands on her. And you know you done decreed that her body lined up. And oh, 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 what if she die? I said that she going to die with a lined up body. Okay, y'all. I, I can't get nobody. Then she gonna die with a lined up body. Then God gonna decide to stop her heart. But everything that I'm prophesying is gonna, is gonna come to pass. She went back to the doctor, Dr. Johnson, that Tuesday. And they had to do these CAT scan things. And they had all these different tubes in her that they had to put in her kidneys and her liver because all of these things were damaged. And they had all these platelets. And the doctor said, my God, we took an x-ray and all the tubes and pushed themselves out and they just floating in her body. One of them then dissolved. These were supposed to stay in her body for at least a year. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what God is saying. Somebody said, well, all right, all right, that's a miracle. All right, 
All right, that's a miracle. The doctor said that was a miracle. All right, that's a miracle. All right. So I'm on my way out of town last week, and my sister sent me a text, and she said, I just got a text. She said, pray, because uh, Kaya just went into a coma, and one of the intercessors was at my house, and they was helping me get my bags together. And I, I went in the room, and I, it, Dr. Johnson, I promise you, it wasn't, it wasn't three minutes. And I just stretched out on my face, and the Lord said, decide and so I laid there and I decided. I got up and went back in the kitchen and I said to the intercessor, I said, she's going to wake up one more time. I said, because God got a word that he just gave me for her. And I can't give it to a person in a coma. I said, the Lord going to open her eyes one more time. And she said, okay. Well, prophets. I said, the Lord said, be at peace. I said, get my bag so we can go. And so she watched this. That wasn't a miracle because she came, she came out the coma. That, that wasn't what God was talking about. She came out of the coma. And, and Elder Boyd, that Friday, my sister got a text and said, the doctors at 935 pronounced her dead. They said, we have shocked the body as many times as we can shock the body. And she's gone. We've already signed the death certificate. And they told my sister, because my sister was, 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 was on the information thing, they said, we didn't want to call you until we were sure. But my sister, God had given her to pray over some handkerchiefs. Uh, Kathy that came here to minister. And, 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 and Kathy called that girl the day before while she was in the hospital and said, the Lord gave me, had me to pray over a handkerchief for you. And so she sent it up to the hospital by one of the girls that worked with us. And the, and the doctors wouldn't let her up on the floor because the girl was in intensive care. Now, watch this. Watch this. This is a girl who have not even openly... I don't even know privately made a commitment that I want to be saved. This is somebody that don't know nothing, nothing about church, nothing. She was just in a car accident and five of her friends and all of them died and she lived. So all this Holy Ghost stuff is all new to her. She, she ain't got no faith. Okay, I'm trying to help somebody in here. In here. She didn't have no faith. But she told the doctor, wheel my bed downstairs. Because y'all can't bring this to me. These people at my church, they prophets. I can't even explain it because I don't even understand it myself. But some just told me it's got to go in my hand. They rolled her bed downstairs in the lobby of the hospital so that girl can put that handkerchief in her hand. The doctor told my sister when she got it and I was rolling her bed back up to the starts to the floor in the elevator she laid it on her face and just stopped breathing in and breathing in and my sister said okay she said we pronounced her dead and my sister said are you sure and the lady said yes ma'am we can't shock the body anymore because we will go beyond state board there's only so much we can do to the body to bring it back and we've already covered up and we pronounced her dead at 9 35 my sister said, where is that handkerchief that I gave her? The doctor said, oh, you mean the, the, the white piece of thing that you said? Oh, that's laying on the nightstand. My sister said, get that handkerchief and lay it on her face. And the doctor said, well, ma'am, she already gone. She said, get that handkerchief and lay it on her face. The doctor laid it on her face and Kaya started coughing and shut up. No, you don't get what I'm saying. Came back to life. I'm not. The doctor started screaming. She said, the nurse has passed out on the floor, Dr. Johnson, crying and screaming. How do you feel? I don't feel it today, but it's coming. Y'all come on, somebody. I, well, what you think? I don't think nothing, but it's coming. Well, what? Why are you praising God? I'm praising God because it's coming. Well, why are you giving God glory? I'm give, Come on. Come on. Do I have a prayer in here today? I'm giving God glory because it's coming. I'm not giving God glory because of what I see. I'm not giving God glory. I'm not giving y'all. I'm praising God because the principle. The principle is at work. The minute I lift my hands and give God praise, I am telling God, I have decided. Now God establish this for me. Establish this for me. From the dead. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
pronounced dead by two doctors had to sign the death certificate. 945 deceased but decided but some what am I saying the Holy Ghost just said to me everybody in here decide for whomever and watch the miracle see the trick the trick is you keep trying to get Junior to believe God so he can be delivered mm -mm. decide for him and be so arrogant about it I'm not here get so arrogant about it that when you see him I made a decision for you today when you see your sister I made a decision for you today I had to transact some business for you I'm not hearing y'all when you see your kids hey how you doing today come on give mama some sugar I made a decision for you today I went and handled some business early this morning for you y'all better come on and take this thing real y'all better come on and take this thing real y'all better come on anybody today and I prophesy anybody today you want to see delivered make a decision for it I'm not giving nobody talk anything today that you want to see change make the decision for it I decide I decide if I if I speak to the waters Now see Sunday, that Sunday, let me say this to you and we're going. That Sunday, there was a stem in that girl's body that was short-circuiting, that was causing her to go into a coma. And the doctor said, y'all, this thing, watch this, brother. Oh, the boy, the doctor said, Pastor Kathy, there's a stem in her side, watch this, that, uh, it won't move over. And we needed to move over or we going back in now for about like the 15th surgery. She said, but we got a more serious problem than that. There's a platelet on her brain and we've already done brain surgery and we can't open her brain up again. And the platelet has to move over. Watch this, y'all. <laughs> she said, and I need you to pray because I have to make a decision that if I don't operate, I know she's going to die. And if I do operate, she won't withstand the surgery. She'll die on the table. Because we can't open the brain up anymore. Because she doesn't even have the physical strength. My sister started praying. And the Holy Ghost told my sister, tell the doctor to go through her nose. What do Kathy know about? What do she know about? medical science no. and the doctor said huh she said God just said it's to go through her nose it's in her nose and the doctor said well I'll call you back she said Miss Bonham we was able to take a tube and go up her nose with a probe and move the platelet on her brain through her nose she said Almost to the point, I think we just created medical history. No, somebody better open up your mouth. Somebody better open up your mouth because I'm talking about God using an ex crackhead. I'm talking about my sister was on crack for 20 years. I'm not giving y'all. And I made a decision for her. I decided I wouldn't got her off the streets. And today she prophesied divine medical. Oh, y'all. Come on, here, somebody. I said he'll use anybody. I said you don't have to be a prophet. went through her nose and my sister got up that Sunday and we were getting ready to dismiss and she said Nita can I say something because she called me Nita 
I said, she said, she can, can I say something? Because the way God is using Kathy now is scaring us. It's literally, she got up last, last Sunday and she was praising God. She said, oh, I stopped throwing. You're going to prophesy people into things. You're going to prophesy companies into doing things for you that's going to break their own rules. Okay. Because y'all keep looking for the regular. It ain't going to happen like that. It's going to happen when they close the door and say, I don't even know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to go and do this for you. But do you know why they got to do it? Because you have prophesied it. You have decided for them. This is how you're going to handle me. I done decided for you. This is how you're going to make this work for me. I done decided for you. This is what you do. When the door came open, I done sent people running everywhere for me. I got people working on stuff for me every day. I said, now you go do this, you go do that, and you go do that, and you go, and, and call me back and tell me how it's going. And when they said, well, that, I don't know, I'm going to prophesy this right here. Okay, now go back and ask them again. Go back and ask them again. Well, the man said it's going to be 12000 a month. I said, no, go back and ask them again. Bring it all the way down. Half that. They said, go ask them for half. Go ask them for half. But what are we going to do for a down payment? We ain't got it. What are we going to do for first and last month's rent? Not that too. The man came out and said, I don't know why I'm doing it, but I give it to you for six. And you, I, I'm just going to waive all the deposits. I got to go. I just keep coming to prayer. Not to pray for you. But to ignite you into who you are okay y'all I can't, I can't get nobody to say nothing but, but I'm going to say it one more time I just keep coming to prayer the pray for you days was in the early days the pray for me days was in the early I come through the door sometimes I hear people say bless her Jesus I said mm -mm, bless you 